and only. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the March session of That's Cray Cray. I'm Jeff Finn, CEO at Realnex, and here today, as always, with Tim Cray, Head of Development. And uh, uh, as you might expect, Tim's been quite busy. The the team just launched a, a major uh, update to the platform earlier in the month. Hopefully, you've all been enjoying that. Tim will share with you some of the, uh, the uh, most significant enhancements that have been put in place, some others that are to come, and uh, answer any questions that you might have along the way. Great new features like our virtual call assist, global pages, real campaigns in CRM. We've got our new Delius integration in place and a whole lot more. So, Tim, I'll let you take it away. And uh, for everyone in the, the audience, as you, if, if you have any questions along the way, just uh, post them in the question box and we'll do our best to address them as we approach the end of the session. So thanks again, Tim, take it away. Hi everybody. I'm gonna show two things today, two of the newest things that I've been working on. And the last couple of webinars I've started with Market Edge. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the CRM this time. About 50% of the people in this webinar are interested in Market Edge and about 70% are interested in the CRM. So the newest thing that we've added is mail merge. We call it real campaigns, but you'll know it as mail merge. And I wanna show you how it works. It's in its infancy right now. So um, it is in production and you can use it, but it's, uh, you're gonna see things getting added constantly. So let's start by showing you uh, how it works. First of all, um, you would create an email that you're going to use. So let's let's start by doing that. To do that, you go up to the top where Real Campaigns is, this menu where it says Groups, Linked, Output. Real Campaigns is the uh, last one in the menu. And when you click that, you won't have any campaigns to begin with. So you'll be taken to the campaigns that we give you as startup points, Real Next templates. These are just templates that I created to get you started. But you want to you want to modify them because they're they're not going to have your logo in it or your name in it or whatever font you want. So you start off by grabbing one of our templates. Let me, let me get rid of this one that I have here, so you can see how see how it works when you come in. So when you first come in, you're going to see this screen. I'm going to start with just a generic email. So I'm going to pick this, and here on the top are three little dots, which is a menu, where you can open our template and use it to do a campaign. But what you wanna do really is copy this to your templates. So it's your template and you can do whatever you want to it. You can't change our templates. Everybody sees these same templates when they start. They're just a starting point. So start out by going to this button and saying copy to my templates. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it email, but you could call it anything you want, but never makes sense to you. And you can have as many of these templates as you want. The owner and the team are the same as always. If you don't want anybody else to see this template, you can make it private or you can set it up for a team or just say anybody in the office can use this, it's up to you. When you save it, that moves this template over to my templates. Now you can edit it. Now you can make it yours. This part, a couple of people got confused on. I'm looking at the template here and they're hitting select, which opens up an email and whatever changes you make, you're making to that email, not to the template. You're making the changes to the email. If you wanna change the template, and that's what I wanna do right now, you go to the menu and you edit the template. So once again, if I wanna just use this template and send out a campaign, I just, click it and I say select and that'll start the email and I can make whatever changes I want and send it out, but it's not gonna change my template. At this point, I wanna get the template so it's got my logo in it and my name. So I'm gonna edit the template. And this part um, works pretty similar to what you're used to in a in an email deal. You have your toolbar with your fonts and bold and italics and all that kind of stuff. I wanna change the logo. 
So I'm going to click the logo. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice the image button lights up. I'll do it again. It's not lit up now. When I click the logo, it's telling me you got to click this button. And that lets you set the image. Now this works like anything else. You go to your hard drive and you grab your logo and you put it in there. I've already saved my logo as a favorite, so I, I've already got it in a drop down, but initially you're going to have to load it. <clears throat> you can set this if you want. This is kind of irrelevant, but you can set it if you want to. So when people hover over it, they see something. Really, is all you have to do is pick your logo and say, OK. That puts your logo in the email. Now, I'm doing this in the template. So from now on, I never have to do this again for this template. It'll always be in there every time I load the template. Right now, it's not um, linked to anything. So it'll just show up like this. But when they click this, I want it to go to my web page. So you can do that too. I click click this link logo. And right next to the image, there's a link icon. I'm going to click that. And that lets me put in any URL I want. I can put a link on anything in any word, in any picture, and anything I have in my system, I can put a link on it. And when they click it, it will take them to that. And it will automatically generate a click link in your campaign notes so you'll know what they clicked on. So if you say you put in three listings in here and you gave each listing a link, it will come back and tell you they clicked on this listing three times. So the links are important. And you just put in whatever it is, https colon slash slash www.realnext.com. This last one, target, is important. If you say none, it'll open up the web page in the, in the window that they're in, and they'll lose your email. So you want to change that to new window. That way, when they click this link, it'll open up a new tab in a new window, and they'll see the website or the product, whatever you've got. But it won't close down your, your email. So I mean, you don't have to do it, but I, I, don't, I don't know why you would want to have them lose your email. So you just click new window. This is just a field from the database. You can drop any field in an email that you want. So this is from the contact table. There's a field in context called first name. But I can put anything in here I want. And you do that um, by just selecting the fields and dropping them in. And I'll show you that when we do it in a second when we do another email. Same with these. These are pulled from your information. You're the sender. So when you're in Realnext and you set up your default name, phone number, all that stuff, it's pulling from there. In my case, I don't have a team that's using this template. So I'd rather put my signature in there. But if I did have a team and they were all going to use this email, these fields make it nice because it, whoever loads the template on my team, it will automatically put their name, title, phone, and email in, and they don't have to do it. But in my case, I'm going to change that. I'm going to hard code in my name and stuff. Uh, because, like I said, I, I'm the only one that's going to use this. So I'm taking this out, and I'm dropping in my information. I like my name to be bold, and I want this to be a link. Now, most of the most of the email software out there, if they see this, they'll automatically make it a link for you. And when they see www, they automatically, like Outlook, automatically does that. But I'd rather be safe, and they maybe they're using some weird email program. I'm just going to make this a link, just like I did the logo. It's easy to do. Highlight it, click the link button, and the link for mail is like HTTPS. For this, it's mail to – that just guarantees that that will show up as a link, and when they click it, they'll generate an email. This same thing here. This is just the HTTPS thing. Open in a new window. OK, so now I've got my email set up just the way I want it to start. And I'm going to make sure I save that. Right here at the bottom, there's a Save button. Now I can use this template. And I don't ever have to mess with it again. So I'm going to click the template and say Select. 
And it opens up an email for me to send out, but notice it's all hand tailored for me. Everything, including their name will just show up in here. When I preview it, I can see the names. As I go through the list here, you see how it changes everything. Beautiful. So I really am doing an individual email to each person in my campaign. I'm not doing a, a bulk thing where they can tell it was a mass mailing. It comes directly to them with their name on it or whatever you put in it, whatever field you want. Every single field is available. How do I add a field? Down here at the bottom, there's a little orange button with a bracket and three dots on it. When you click that, it brings up a dialogue with the recipient's information and the sender's information. So this is all of my information in here. This is all of the people that I'm sending to. And these mimic exactly what you see in the contact manager when you're in a contact record. You have a tab for investor. There's every single field in the investor tab. Anyone you want to put in your email, you put in there. Same for all of these. So to insert a field, you just pick the field and say insert, and it'll just put in the field like that. We also have the ability to drop HTML in an email. So let's say that you created an email or somebody created an email for you in HTML. When you're in the email message, you can click this little button that looks like two arrows side by side. Just delete this out and paste your HTML in and you'll have the HTML email all done for you. Save it as your template and you can reuse it over and over again. So once again, if you have HTML, somebody's written to you, it's this little button right here, it says source code. Click the button, take this out and just paste in your HTML and you'll have whatever you, whatever you design. A couple other things I want to highlight. This stuff's all, you know, all, all this stuff. But here's the link I talked about. Here's how you add a photo. You click the image button. Put your cursor where you want the photo. Click the image button. And then go find an image on your hard drive. You can get you can change the image titles. Those are things that happen when they curse when they mouse over the thing. I'm not going to do that. It takes time, but you can set it up that way. The image comes in just like it does in Outlook. This, whatever size it was, you can resize it because that's always going to be pretty big. And you can make a link on it if you want to. Do the same thing I just did for the logo. Click the picture. Go up here where the link is. Click the link and then put in anything you want. And whenever they click that photo, it'll take them directly to that and it will record the fact that they clicked it. You can also put in videos. So let's say I, ha I have a video on YouTube that I did. Right next to the image, there's video, insert media. I'll click that and it asks me for the YouTube link. So when you create a YouTube video, it has a share button and it gives you the link. You just paste that link in here and we'll do the rest. You notice it automatically picked up the picture. It did everything for me. So all I had to do is put this in. This is a clickable link. When they click it, you'll know that they clicked that video and watched it. You don't have to do anything extra for a video. Sometimes I don't like the picture that YouTube puts up. So easy to get around that. I make my own picture. I add a photo just like I did here. I click on the photo and I click on the link and I put the link in here. Works the same way. The only difference is I don't get YouTube's picture. I get the picture that I wanted to put in there. And this is kind of nice because it happens automatically. But like I said, I don't very often I don't like the picture that they used. I don't know how they decide what to use, but it's just it's very generic. Um, so, that's enough about creating a video. To send it, you just hit send. Also, you can send yourself a test. So, like I could hit send test email. I can tell it who to email the send test, who to email the test to. So, if I'm working for somebody else, I could send the test email to them and they could see it. And then select the contact. It just wants to know that because in my email, I added this field. It wants to know which contact you want to use to, to show you what it's going to look like. So when I say test, I'll just pick the first person in here, Shrita. 
and say send. And then that, that will go to Outlook. And in Outlook, I can just pick up the email and take a look and see what it looks like. And that way I know exactly what everybody's going to get before I send it. Also notice that down at the bottom, it tells you you have 718 emails left of 1,000. Well, I have Real Next Navigator, so I automatically get 1,000 emails every month for free. When I've been watching campaigns people are sending out so far, there's somebody who did 48 campaigns this month. But for the most part, people are doing six or seven campaigns a month with 80 to 150 people in them. Those are considered fairly big. It's not like you're trying to mass mail 55,000 people in your database and just have them all um, unsubscribe from you. They're trying to send out information on a listing or something that's you don't really want everyone in the world to see it anyway. So you're going to sort of hand pick them and you're trying to track who's opening it. So for a lot of people, a thousand is enough. But if it's not, or maybe you didn't buy any emails, maybe you just have the CRM and you don't have any emails at all, you can hit buy more and it's it's cheap. These are, these are the emails. For ten bucks, you get five thousand. For I think fifteen dollars. You get fifteen dollars. You get ten thousand a month. I can't imagine somebody doing ten thousand a month, but it's cheap. So if you if you want to do that, if you need more emails, you can just buy them. They're ch they're cheap enough. <clears throat> so that's what that's all about. It's just telling you how many you have left for the month. And every month this this re ups again, and you have another thousand, or another ten thousand, or another fifteen thousand, or however many it is that you need. Okay, so what happens when I send out a campaign? When you send out a campaign, uh, it's going to record that in the in the uh, campaign button that you did that. So I did a campaign just to see how it worked. And it's up here at the top. Do you see where it says uh, campaigns? Sale comps is right here. So you can see where my mouse is. Right to the right of that is real campaigns. That's going to be a list of every campaign that you've sent out. It's going to tell you how many people it was sent to, um, and other information. So this one I sent out just to some market edge people about global pages, which is the thing I'm going to show you next. And if I click the stats button, it'll show me uh, how many went out, how many were delivered, how many were dropped. Dropped means they either unsubscribed or their email, uh, or something was wrong with the, with the email. Um, and bounces is the same thing. This usually means that you're you got a goofy email in there, like you put a comma in instead of a period or something. So these are useful because when you click on them, they show you exactly who it was and what happened. So these are all people that watched my video, for example. So I'll, I can sort it by count because I want to know who watched the video the most, or in your case, who clicked on the uh, listing the most. And then you can go and take a look at those people and see what they were doing. So in this case, uh, BS is, let's say, I want to see who that is. And so I go to Brian's record and I go to the campaigns tab here at the top. We have profile events, all that. You have a campaigns tab that shows the campaigns for this one person. And I can open it up and I can see exactly what happened. It was delivered. He opened it. He clicked it. Here's the link he clicked on. Here's my video click. He clicked on the video again. So this is just a way for me to know when I'm on the phone, which listings or which things I've sent out to the person they've opened, and I can talk to them about it. If they didn't open it, then probably didn't have any interest. Or I may say, like I did with Jeff Finn this morning, he said, I, I never got that. I looked up Jeff Finn, and it was delivered to his mailbox on the 23rd at 8.58 a.m., and he looked and he said, oh, it's over here. I missed it. So uh, I would have brought that up on a phone call knowing that uh, Jeff, I'm really shocked that he didn't open that. He probably didn't see it. Very, very helpful. And a lot of stats are coming out. I'll show you something I've just started working on today. It's not in production. This stuff I'm showing you now is in production. I, I'm not showing you anything that you can't do right now. But what I'm working on, started working on today is um, some more stats, which I think are going to be really helpful. So let's say that I do an email campaign. I have 184 people here. 
and I don't do any kind of a filter at all. I'm just going to send this out to 184 people. So I do a campaign. I say records and current query, which means I'm going to get 184 emails. I pick my email I want to send. <clears throat> and here's what I'm working on now, campaign stats. So this is really helpful, I, I think. Campaign stats goes into the database and it says, okay, these are the stats for this campaign you're sending. You have 1,000 emails a month. You've sent out 282. You have 718 left. After this campaign is done, you'll have 544 left. Okay. Contacts in current query, 184. Contacts in current campaign, 174. What happened to the other 10 people? This is what happened. Four of them you marked as do not email, so we're skipping those. If you mark a contact as do not email, we don't email to them no matter what you do. We just think we ignore them totally. So when someone writes back to you and says, don't email me anymore, you don't have to remove them from your database. You don't want to remove them from your database. You just check the box that says do not email, and they'll never get an email from you again out of our system, out of the CRM. Secondly, contacts that are missing an email. There's two people that don't have an email in this query. Okay, there'll be a little link here that will say show me, and it will show you the two people that don't have an email so you can fix that. And then lastly, contacts with duplicate emails. Wait a minute, how can two people have the same email? You can't. Everybody has their own email. Show me who those four people are because there's something goofed up here. What we do in this system is these, there's actually five people that have the same email, but four of them were duplicates, so we left one in just so we could send the email. So all five of these people are going to get the email because we're going to send it to one email address, and those five people all share the same email. They're all going to get one copy of that email. Not, they're not going to get five copies of it, one. But you should fix that because that's a, that's a goof up. You can't, you can't share the same email address. And I guess you can if you're husband or wife, but you know what I mean. If you've got four brokers and they all have the same email address, you probably put in the company or something and not their email. So these stats will be really helpful for you. And I've gotten used to now in staging because it's not in production. Every time I start a campaign, before I send it, I hit this button because I don't want to find out that this number, uh, contacts and current query, says 77,000. I've had five people call me and say, I sent out a test email to a hundred people because I forgot to set a query. I just want to see what it did. So I was like, oh, oh, that's not cool. I'm going to put in a stats button to let you know before you send it, you got to hit the button to check. And you should do that every single campaign you do to make sure that you didn't accidentally forget to set a query and you're sending it to your entire database. <coughs> uh, it's embarrassing. And of course, you lose all your emails if you do that. Um, okay, so that's a lot on email campaigns, but um, there's also a preview view just so you can see what the email is going to look like before you send it. But I, that's fine. Always send yourself a test email before you send out a campaign. Always. You, you never know what it's going to look like until you send it. And I send it to my uh, my phone and my computer so I can check both and make sure that there isn't anything that looks weird in it because, you know, this is I'm sending this out to people hoping to get business. I want to make sure it looks good. So this is okay, but really the best is test email. That, that's really the safest way to do it. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if we should take questions on that or just keep going because the next yeah, one is going to go to market as they don't have anything to do with each other. Perfect. So there's a couple <laughs> things. Um, one, I would say just maybe if you took a look at some of the other templates, the, a concept for this one would be something like maybe you're you're doing a query against your lease expirations for 2022, and you could do a, a merge to get that information and then say, hey, Tim, I see that your, your lease at 123 Main Street, and that could be one of your data fields, is about to expire in, in June of next year. Again, that's from your your database, so you're, you're personalizing and using your data to to personalize the message, uh, and, and I wanted to, to uh, talk to you about that. Um, we, we're seeing that lease rates in that area are now X, Y, and Z. So some, you know, that that's one thing. We've also, as you see, 
come up with newsletter formats, um, uh, sort of uh, market report formats, and a number of other templates that you can use for announcements. But uh, of course, we can design and, and build other other formats for you. So it's more powerful than just email, and that's the advantage of having this integrated into your your database. So Tim, you might want to talk about some of the other concepts that have been uh, contemplated here. Well, we, I just designed some off the top of my head. These are just examples. You just replace it with your information, save it as your template. Um, so you can go through these on your own. There's two ways to view them. You can view them like this, or you can go up here to the top and change the view where you can see a list, and then you see a much bigger example of what the template will look like. And if we don't have one in here that you like, you can pay us to design your own, or as I said, you can just drop HTML in these are just HTML, and it'll do whatever you whatever you wanted it to do. So yeah, pretty to, generic yeah. stuff. The other thing to mention but here is just, we've just launched, and you, you, as you scroll through those videos, we, we've got a new video maker app, and uh, I think that the the audience might be interested in learning more about that. With our our video maker, we're able to uh, we have an app that allows you to stitch together multiple scenes. Uh, you, you take video clips throughout a property tour, and then we package it together with your with your branding, with your logo, with your colors, and some music in the background, and it really looks like a highly um, professional package that most would spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, and you can do it for for dollars, in, uh, you know, virtually unlimited use during the month. So, really uh, great new enhancement. Uh, one other question that that came in, Tim, was about formatting text like you did in the email can you do that in notes or events and uh, will that be possible but if you want to you know, go to the story vine first before you address that I'm not, uh, i was just i was just showing people you can just yeah. go to products and you can see the delius and the story vine stuff if you want to see what that's all about they Perfect. have videos and stuff on there uh, i'm not sure what you mean what do the events and notes have to do with the email they do, but the, the, you know, we did the yeah the text formatting ability in uh, the email. Where there's a question about formatting text in notes or uh, events. You, you've always been able to do formatting in notes. I'm not sure what what they're asking. You're just talking about notes, right? Where we have yep. this note tab with the toolbar. Yep. So that's just you've always had that. Yeah, so you just yeah, go that's up. Been there, that's been there since the DOS days. Yeah. Yeah. That's not new. That's that's always been there. It's available anywhere there's notes. Events, history, projects, anywhere there's notes, you, you have the toolbar. So it's, it's in all of them. It seems like there, well, there's another, I'll follow up with that outside of uh, this call. So why don't you, you can take it to the next segment for now. So the next thing is uh, global pages in Market Edge, which are really a big deal. Um, and I'll show you why. When you create a, a presentation, and, and in Market Edge, you could create a presentation. It could be a flyer, a single page flyer, um, a, a two page brochure, a memorandum, a full proposal, um, BOV, so many things. Everybody thinks you can, oh, this is way overkill. I don't need to do a whole thing on the, all the numbers and all of that. I just want to do a flyer. There's no reason why you can't do a flyer. <laughs> when you say new property, we ask you to name it, and you can decide, I don't want any of this stuff. Is all I want in there is a, ge is a, a general tab where I can put the property information and a presentation tab where I can create a flyer. That's all. And I may not even care about the general stuff. I may just make a flyer. So don't think you have to create some gigantic proposal using this. You can just do the simplest thing in the world. And I'm going to show you uh, how I use it. This is just a scenario that I created for some fake property. So you can ignore the numbers. They're, they're not real and it's not a real property. If you think you're going to steal a listing. I know how you guys think. So when this opens up, I've got this gigantic list of pages. These are all pages that are going to show in my thing. And like I said, the people think you have to do this huge layout. You don't. Let's say that I, so all I want to do is a really simple flyer, nothing else. So I'm going to go to layouts, 
And I'm going to say, just give me a cover page. I don't need anything else. <laughs> I don't know what all this stuff is, but just make it simple. I want one page. So now we open up, and now your presentation is only one page. I don't, I don't like that cover page. Fine. We've got a whole bunch of them that are free. Just go in here and pick the one that you want. We got a bunch of uh, portrait and a bunch of them in landscape. So you just pick what you like. Uh, okay, I'll take this one, portrait. <clears throat> now you can put whatever picture you want in here. Put change the change this information if you want to. This all came from the uh, property tab, but I can just change it right on the page. Change the brokers. Change the logo. Um, was real nice to whatever your logo is so it's very simple to use here's where it got interesting that's not interesting people can go to report pages and they can pick all these different pages that we have like um map okay map maps useful so that goes to google and it plots your property on a map and you can change it to show roads and you can zoom in and all that all the stuff that you all know about you do a business map where you, it puts businesses around it. There's a Burger King here. There's a fitness thing here. And all of those things are preloaded, predefined, and you can pick them. But you can't design your own page. So about two months ago, we, we created what are called custom pages. Custom pages let you define what you want to show, but they only apply to that property. So if I create a, pro, if I create a custom page and put it in this proposal, and then I create a new proposal, I have to recreate it again. That's what I've changed. We have a new type of, uh, Jeff, can you mute? Because I'm hearing all kinds of feedback. I think it must be your mic. <clears throat> so what's new is, um, let me go to staging where I've got it set up. Global, global pages is what's new. So uh, let me go into the same thing. Sorry, I was in the, I was in so many different uh, versions of my computer. As a developer, I have about nine different versions of this thing going all the time. So under report pages, I have a thing that's new called global pages. What global page means is if you create that page, it's available in any proposal. So once again, if I just make a if I just make a, a customizable page for this proposal, it's only going to be available to this proposal. If I create a global customizable page, now that's available everywhere, and that's what's big. So I'm going to go to under global pages. I'm going to go to manage global pages, and that's where I can edit my global pages or create global pages. So here's an example of something I did. I don't know why I was showing somebody something. I said, I want to have a broker page that has my team on it. So I went in here and I picked the layout that I wanted. This was the layout I wanted. And I dropped in the photos and I dropped in the bios. And that page is available in every proposal I do. And I had another one where I said, well, I wonder what else I can do. So you get, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do. I'll create one and give you a better example. Or maybe you watch the video I sent out. But these are really great. And the big only difference between what we had before and these are these pages, global, are available in every proposal. And if you save a layout, the global page will be available in every proposal as well. So the global pages just mean you can use them everywhere, where just a regular page is only available in the proposal you created in. Here's one where I <clears throat> added um, spaces in. So I went to the trouble of designing this available space layout, and I don't want to have to keep changing it every time. So how do you do that? Well, you go here and you say columns, and you pick what columns you want for the available spaces. So I don't need I don't need tenant. It's available spaces. I don't care about that. I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. Yeah, I want the rate to say. Per year, because I don't want that. I don't want to have that in every single one of these 
see, I don't know if you can see underneath this where it says rate, $11 SF year. I don't want to see that. So I'm putting the title in as rate SF year, and I'm saying don't show me the units. In other words, don't show me that text after. Just put it in the title. Just make, don't have to do it. Just makes it cleaner. I could change the font. I could change the color. Whatever I want to do, I, I set it up the way I want it, and I save it. Now, when I when I use this global page, it will automatically come up with this exact format. I don't have to keep redoing it every single time I add my page that I designed. Same with field widgets. This is also brand new stuff. Field widgets, these come from the general tab. So these are just fields that you fill in for every proposed, every property you have if, if you want to do it. And when I click on this, I can pick which fields I want. That's new. So let's say that I don't do for sale or I do both. I do for sale and I do for lease. Okay. So you create two global pages. One is called for sale and one is called for lease and they have different fields in it. Or maybe you do office and you do retail. So you have a global page for office where it has the fields that apply to the office product and you have another one that applies to retail or multifamily or whatever whatever it is that you do. So when I'm doing a proposal for multifamily, I'll drop the global page in there that says it's for multifamily and it'll have all the fields I picked for that. So in other words, if this was for lease, I wouldn't have purchase price as part of it. I would have the um, uh, rate, whatever the rate is on here. Somewhere there's a rate, <clears throat> lease rate, and I would and I would rearrange the fields so that lease rate was at the top. I'd just drag it up here to the top and drop it. So once I set this up, if it's a global page, I never have to do it again. I just drop the page in. It will pull all the information from the general tab of that proposal and drop it in for you. So I can open up 30 properties and every one of them would be filled in automatically for me as soon as I drop that page in. And I just have to design what it looks like. Same for PDFs. Let's say that I have somebody professionally design a PDF for me with my team on it. Or maybe I have two or three different teams I work with. So I have them design the page the way I want it to look. And then I just add that PDF, not as a PDF to the proposal, as a global PDF. So it's available in every single proposal I create. Could be a two-page flyer. The first page is the property stuff. The second page is our team. Could be a brochure. Doesn't make any difference how big it is. You just drop the page if you want it. And if you don't want it, you don't drop it in. And if you create a layout, in other words, once I add this, add these, things to my package here. Let's say that I decide I'm going to have a, a two-page flyer, a cover sheet, and my <clears throat> and my broker page that I created, my global broker page. So I just drop that in. Because that's a global page, I can say layouts. I can say create new. Two-page flyer. And that that will be available in every single proposal I load. And it will load up just like this, with the cover page, the way I set it up, with my three agents as the second page. So you save yourself a ton of time and you make it look like you want it to look. I'll show you how, how easy it is to create a page now. And again, if, you, if you're using MarketEd, you got my email two days ago with a video shows you how to do all this. So you can just go back in your email and find it. It was sent out uh, around 9 a.m. Pacific time on the 23rd. <clears throat> so just have to adjust your time zone. And it's called uh, Real Next Market Edge Global Pages. So let's create a new one, okay? Customizable page. First thing you gotta do is you gotta pick the layout. Okay, how do I do that? Over here on the right, it says select layout. These are all the layouts I give you. So when you click it, you'll see what it looks like. This is just two columns. Here's one with two rows and two columns. So the, these, these tell you how many rows there are gonna be, one row, two rows, and this tells you how many columns, one column, two columns. 
What about this one? This one looks crazy. Well, what that says is there are four rows. The first row has one column. The second row has one column. The third row has two columns. And the fourth row has two columns. Oh, OK. One row with one column. Second row, one column. Third row, two. OK, so it's exactly what this says. OK, so somebody said, yeah, but I, I'm not very good at that. I can't really see what I'm supposed to put there. I don't, can you give me an idea of what goes in this? So we created examples. When you're on a template now, you can hit examples. And I'll give you some examples of what you might put in these fields. It doesn't mean that that's what you have to do. It's just an example I came up with to show you what you might do. But it's unlimited what, how you set these things up. Totally up to you. But the examples are just, you go from template to examples. Template shows you where the boxes are. Examples show you something that I came up with. Again, this is just these are just ideas. You can do your own thing. So let's do um, two and two. Two rows, two columns. So I got four squares. Okay, now I got my layout. Now I want to do something with it. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to drop a photo in there. But I don't want to drop a photo in that's going to be used in every package. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm just going to put a placeholder in. And all of you will have this thing that looks like a mountain with a sun over it or a moon over it, one of those two. When you drop that in, it's just a placeholder. So when this global page gets added to a package, you know that you just have to click that to add the photo for that package because every package is going to have different photos. Next to it, I want to have another photo or a map. Let's say a map this time. That map will regenerate based on the location of the property that you're doing the proposal on or the flyer on. Mm. I don't like that. I'm going to change it to satellite. It's too close. So however you zoom, whatever format you use, that will be remembered every time you use this global page. So you just got to set this up the way you want it. Here, I wanted to put in the property description. That comes from the general tab for each property. So it just, it'll fill in automatically. Down here, I want a bullet list. And I want uh, three of them, three separate bullet lists. And I could put in a title for each one. I could change the background color of each one to my company color. I can dress it up any way I want. I can space it out a little more. I can change the margins. This is brand new. Let's let's look let's look at this. Let's say that I want to have two columns of bullet lists. Okay, you couldn't do that before. Well, I mean, you could do it, but it looked bad. I'm going to make this a bullet list. So now I got two bullet lists side by side. But I want it to look like one bullet list that covers two columns. I don't want it to look like two separate sections. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to change the background color of this to my company color. <coughs> and do the same thing for the um, for the bullet part. Now it's sort, and I don't want a title on the second one. So here's how you get around that, a little trick. If you don't put anything in this field at all, it'll just leave a blank space there when you preview it, when you print it out. So it will look like the title will be here, um, property highlights. And this won't have a title, but these bullet points will line up. The one, the one issue is I can tell it's not one list because there's a line in here. So what I did is I put a little checkbox over here on the right that says enable padding. If you enable padding, there'll be a white line between everything. If you turn that off, that all goes away. Now it's beginning to look like a single bullet list down here. So I'll put in a fake bullet. But this is what annoyed me. I don't like the margins. <laughs> this is way too far from the left. This one is too far from the right, and they're right on top of the of the photo. Let me put a photo in there. Right on top of the photo and the um, map. 
So what I added just recently, and this is in production, is margins. When you click on this, there's a thing here in the middle that looks like a, I don't know what it looks like, squares. And now you can set the margins. Okay, I want this to be 20. And you can see how it's showing you where the margin starts. So I could go further if I wanted. And on the right, I can see where the line is on the right. That's pretty close. I think I want a little more on the right than that and make that 15. And the top, I definitely want space. I'm going to go down 10. And yeah, it's not enough. I'm going to try a little bit of it. Okay, 13 looks good to me. Apply that. And I want to do the same thing on this side. Set the margins over here. So the left is at 10. I'm going to make it 20. The right, I'll do 15 again. And the top, I'll do 10. Or well, I guess I did 13. I want them to I want them to match so that this bullet list matches this bullet list. Uh, that's too far. That's too that's fine. Okay, that's good. So the margins are available on anything that has text in it, paragraphs, bullet lists, uh, uh, titles, anything that has it. And once you set those up, uh, whether it's in your report page or if it's in the global page, it remembers it for that page. So you can see how you can get really pretty good at making these things, making them look exactly the way you want them to, saving the global page, and now you're proposals or your brochures, whatever it is, become super fast and they're tailored to the way you want them. Let's say I don't want this title and I don't want this thing at the bottom. Well, you can say show header or footer, just turn it off. And that takes away the header and the footer on that page. You can do that page by page. You can turn it on or off. And you, of course, you already know you can create your own footer. So you put your company in there and your whatever you want to put in the footer and the header. Oh, oh uh, there's also global photos. Oh, yeah, that actually is another really cool feature. <laughs> global photos, are they work the same way as uh, global PDFs and global uh, pages. To, to add a global photo, you go to Preferences and Photos. That's where you can add your photo library. And under Global Photos, you add photos that you think you're going to use all the time. You don't, you don't want to add property photos here. You only add things here that you're going to reuse in proposals. So this is my team of brokers. Um, these are some things I like to use in section pages. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So I, I bought these images. And they have to do with certain sections that I put in here. So I might have a section for comparables. <laughs> I might want to use this one that I bought. I might want to use this one. I have one for... Um, financials. I might use this for the section page cover. So let me show you how that works. To add a global page, you just go to this global page thing and upload photos. And then they, they're available in every proposal you do. So let's say that I have a pretty big proposal. I have like uh, eight pages. And I want to separate those pages with sections. So let's add, let me add a couple pages, even though it doesn't matter what the pages are. And let's do um, maps. And demographics. Okay, so I want to put a section in here that separates property photos from maps. Okay, sections are right here at the very top, a section page. It's just a page, it's just a separator. I'll drop it right between photos and map, and there it is. When I put up a section page, I get to tell it what to say. I also can decide what the format is. So I'm going to go to edit page. And I have these different things. I can see what they look like when I click them. It shows you here underneath what it looks like. <clears throat> OK, I like that one. I'll change the name to Maps Demographics. And I'll change it from no photo to having a photo. When I click the photo, and here's the key, if I use a global photo and I save this layout, that section page will come back with the format I laid out and the photo. 
if I use just a regular photo, these photos are only available for this proposal. When I save the section page as a layout, it'll lose the photo in every other proposal because that photo doesn't exist. That's where global pages make their name. So in this one, it's called um, Maps. <coughs> so I'm going to use this as my picture, this, uh, whatever this old map is, and save it. So now as they're moving through my proposal, and maybe I have one for photos too, you can have as many as you want, but when they go from photos in my proposal to this, they're gonna see a separator that says maps and demographics and then uh, whatever is after that, analysis and so on. The, the key is because I use the global photo, I can now go to layouts and save this and it will pull them all back up. Uh, whatever's whatever's in this thing. <clears throat> It'll pull up whatever layouts you want or it will save them. So you'll have to do those because I didn't have global photos until just now. So if you've made these section pages, you'll need to update the section pages with a global photo and then save the layout again, and then you can reuse it over and over again. Okay, Jeff, that's my whole thing. Excellent, Tim. We gave it a minute to see if there's any other questions. I was able to answer most of them in the, the chat along the way. But if there are questions that anyone has, please send them across. Uh, Rodney said he didn't get your email the other day, so he wanted to make sure he's on your, your list. But Rodney, you might want to check your spam filter, or it, it showed up actually with me. It was in the, um, clutter, so I just needed to to uh, to get that from that section so Tim's going to check and make sure you're you're there and when you got it if you got it you're on the list so if you just uh, maybe check So yeah, uh, guy, the uh, the email is live now. You were asking when when that is live, so you should find that on the uh, the uh, contacts menu option called Real Campaigns. You're able to create your. You got query. it, but you opted out. Uh, so you opted out of getting emails from us, so it didn't send it to you. When you opt out of getting emails, we don't send them to you, so that's why you didn't get it. But it was sent to you, and what's neat about it is. It notifies me. So one of one of the guys that I that uh, is on the beta team opened up my email at uh, like within one minute of when I sent it, and I texted him. I said, "Are you reading my emails now?" And he laughed and said, "How did you know that I just opened that?" I said, uh, "Not only that, I saw that you just opened up the video. How do you like it?" He he was stupefied. He's like, how did you do that? I said, right out of the CRM, man. It told me the second you opened it, and I went right to you and said, hey, I know what you're doing. <laughs> it I'm was watching. the coolest thing. I got a kick out of it. I wasn't watching him at all, but the Big CRM brother. just told me, hey, this guy just opened up your email and is watching your video. You might want to call him right now. <laughs> and if I had a listing, you bet I'd have called and said, hey, can I answer any questions on this thing? I'm trying to unload this thing. You might be the guy. So, Tim, I know this is a challenge in some third-party systems for the opt-in and opt-out. So, Rodney is raising his hand and saying, how do I opt back in? So, he said, uh, well, for whatever reason, he's opted out, but he wants to opt in. So, how do I get him back? Is that, do you, you have control of that in your contact record? Tim, lost you. He opted out of Realnex, not me. So anything that comes from Realnex, he doesn't he doesn't get anything. So how he probably how, got a bunch of properties for sale at least. So I can't do that. You have to write to support, and they have to go in to the engine, and they have to un unsubscribe you. So <laughs> I can't. So anyone, you if can't if any any user, if uh, if anybody unsubscribes to email campaigns from 
them or real next how their clients would need to contact support well they have two options you can get your own domain you pay for that and then your domain it has a completely separate list of unsubscribes so if you want to get your own domain you can do that and then you're not tied to us at all you just have to pay for it or you can use ours and it's you don't pay anything but if people have opted out of it uh, out of everything from real next then they won't get the email you'll get a, you'll get a notification of what happened and you'll be able to tell them <clears throat> So you'll know who didn't so, get it, just like I see Rodney didn't get it. But so, if, if you run into this issue now, if you want to just uh, contact support, maybe show them when that request uh, support button, Tim. They could just type a message in there. Uh, Harrison and his team can reach out to you and get you get you back in. Yeah, and for people that are doing a lot of emails, um, they're not going to be. Usually brokers aren't emailing to people that have real next. They're emailing to their clients, so they're not part of our system at all. But if you know, I mean, yeah, I'm emailing to people that are using our software, and because of the emails that come out from other brokers of all these properties they're trying to sell or lease, I know people just say, "I don't want to see all these properties." They just unsubscribe from everything, not the guy, everything, because you can unsubscribe from a person. But if you unsubscribe from everything, then you literally are taken out of anything we mail that you're supposed to be. So if you have your own domain, you don't have to worry about that. And for people that do a lot of emailing, like Moody Rambin or NAI or those groups where they're doing 150000 a month, <clears throat> they'll get their own domain. It's 15 or 20 bucks or something. Very expensive. And then yeah. they're, not, they're not tied to us anymore. All right. Looks like we covered the questions for the day, covered the time. Tim, as always, it's great to see what you're up to and the great work that's being done. And uh, for everyone in the audience, we appreciate your support and being here and participating. Keep the questions and ideas coming so we can keep building great software for you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.